Tracy Brown. Tracy on uh, TDA. He's with TDA. And um, this is a thing toward uh, short term rentals. Yeah. Yeah. The floor is yours, Chief. So uh, Ed asked me to present or talk a little bit about this uh, platform that we've been looking at called STR Helper, Short Term Rental Helper. Uh, it's a company out of Utah that monitors short term rental properties and the activity that goes on in different municipalities. Uh, we do have several uh, municipalities in North Carolina that are using them. It was suggested to me by some folks over in Jackson County and I uh, later learned that Beach Mountain just started using them. Um, so we had them run uh, a quick swipe of our uh, online rental properties things like Airbnb, HomeAway, uh, all those different VRBO, Vacation Rental by Owner. Uh, we had done a, a look at what we thought was going on in Blowing Rock, uh, what we could find, tried to eliminate all duplications, and we were able to come up with about 75 in Blowing Rock proper. They came back with a, an initial look at it and said we had about 125 properties. Um, I looked on TripAdvisor, I could only find 39. Right. There's a lot of stuff happening that we don't see. That's great. So uh, our idea, uh, our thought process is we don't know what we don't know. And to learn what we don't know, to find that out, we've got to hire or need a company to come in and do that for us on a daily basis. So this particular company, STR Helper, has been in it probably longer than anybody. There's not many folks doing this kind of work. We did check a couple other companies, but STR Helper had the best platform that we could find <coughs> that would not only give us the information we're looking for in terms of who is renting and where they are, uh, but they also have uh, layers within their uh, platforms to connect with planning and zoning, then they could find out if the property is in the proper zones, if it's where they should be renting or not. Um, they can connect several different uh, parts of the, uh, when, they're, when they're swiping and looking at, at what's happening, they can connect through the different platforms, things like uh, letters of compliance or non-compliance. If somebody's renting, let's say, in Mayview or somewhere where they shouldn't, they'll be able to generate letters from planning and zoning or emails that go directly to that property owner. Right now, when we look, say, on VRBO or yeah. Airbnb, yeah. we don't know exactly where that property is. You don't know that until you book. Um, this will tie a property to an owner through the GIS at the county level. Um, again, we don't know what we don't know until we try this for a couple of years. And it would, I think it would help us in knowing who's and where, but it also help the town in making sure that they're following the rules. Um, so that's the gist of it. The uh, cost of this program for a year is right up $15,000, it's $14,500. Uh, our idea was the TDA board uh, voted at their last meeting that they're willing to pay half of that if the town wants to win half on it. Um, because in their minds, our minds, it's probably just as important for the town, or maybe even more important for the town to know what's going on in the TDA. <clears throat> what may happen, uh, I, I fully believe we will probably lose some revenue uh, if you all are going to sink teeth into some ordinance and start actually patrolling and making sure folks are going to be <coughs> above board. Right now Airbnb pays us regardless of where they are in the zoning. Uh, it doesn't matter to them. Airbnb doesn't care. That's
that's a town issue. Uh, we get a check every month from Airbnb. How much? Uh, the online stuff, I mean, it varies, but the online stuff, and Nicole can probably, probably answer quicker than me, is less than 10%. Less than ten percent of our overall income. Is that about? So third-party booking uh, agencies yeah. as a whole, yes. Yeah. Not just from right. Airbnb. Right. Airbnb is going to be much smaller than that. Yes. Yeah. How much is the Airbnb check? I mean, we, we we cannot disclose how much is is reported to us per entity. Um, that is. That's state That is. Mm -hmm. That is confidential. Uh, do you know that number? No, I don't. I can't. We don't. We don't allow him to see that. Okay. So if if there are 125, we think now they wouldn't be all Airbnb. Right. Well. Uh, right. Exactly. exactly. I mean, we could. What? Where my my head is heading is that. Are we getting all the money we're supposed to be getting from Probably Airbnb? Probably not. Oh well, yes, yes. Airbnb. Absolutely. They uh, were looking at a class action lawsuit a few years ago and made arrangements with every municipality in the country. In North Carolina? Well, North Carolina was fixing to launch a class action, but that was going across the country. And they stood, they stepped up and made arrangements with everybody, so they cut a check to everybody. So they, um, what, so the way they're set up is that they do, ten, ten, are you saying they do 10% of the, uh, what they pay? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I'm no. saying they get third, less than ten percent from Airbnb. No, we get online bookings. Right. Okay, through right. people not only just uh, Airbnb or FlipKey or HomeAway, sure but also yeah, true, yeah, anybody that's booking online. Companies out there doing this. Right. That are already sending us a check. No. no. Who no. is sending us a check? Airbnb. 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 Is going to be Airbnb. So that is the one. That is the one. Do we get checks from anyone else? Yeah, um, we were getting from TripAdvisor, and um, I've got a list of them right here. Okay. How about individuals? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we should be getting them from individuals. Yeah, if, you're, if you're talking about the number of companies, that's one thing. I mean, we've got there, there's about yeah what um, eighty on there. They're paying. Yeah, there's quite Total a few. Total entities, there's, there's probably... Yeah, diamond properties, I mean, single... That make, made up of... Single owners. Hotels, lodging, yeah. Yeah. made up of third-party booking agencies, uh -huh. made up of real estate agencies, right. made up of individual owners. Right. right. Do they tell you in Airbnb, do they give you the list of the addresses? No, no. no they don't. No. Okay. Nor, nor, does any of the real, nor do any of the real estate companies. Why? But the, the homeowners would. The home, well, the homeowners are paying their own. Right. Uh, if if they're not contracted with the company, if they are through Jenkins, for instance. Right. We get a check from Jenkins. We right. don't get a check from Jenkins saying we rented this house, this house, this house, this house by these owners. Right. We just get a check. We have no idea what they're paying for. Are they're, we allowed to ask that? I think we're allowed, uh, but there's no mandate at the state level that requires. Uh, at so seven we levels, could do more we did change it. We changed it and we put on the reporting form that they had to tell us who they were paying for and how much. Okay. So the address? Yes. Yeah. And Tracy, what's, what percent, I know I already asked you this, but I'm doing it for the open. What percent occupancy tax does the town get versus TDA? Uh, the town, for infrastructure purposes, gets one third of our overall income. And then uh, for marketing purposes, two thirds goes back to the TDA. Okay. And there's so, also an administration fee that goes to the town for administering this. That comes out. It's first. more than that one third. It comes out before the sixty-six and the and the one third are about. Is that enough to equal fifty percent? No. Is that? I mean, when you three, when your board said fifty-fifty, we're not getting fifty-fifty. So that would be why I'm just relating this. I know what we talked about. But it doesn't seem fair for the town to be fifty percent when we're only getting a third of the income. But for planning and zoning and board of adjustments and other purposes, it might be worth it to us, that type of information. Okay, let me go back. Let me say something. No, I'm just saying paying for it. If, Tracy, if we use STRL, uh, we're paying them 14 dollars a year. Uh, we can get all the addresses from that. Absolutely. 
Exactly. That, that's an easy fix. Correct. Why should we be paying? Well, now we're double paying. So if we do STR, okay, to get these addresses, and then we're going to the town, say, or the Jenkins or whoever, say, we need the addresses. We're oh, if you do this, you won't need to. Right. That's right. So, yeah. so that's back beneficial. Just a second on the, 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 the folks that are paying. The ones that we are not sure if we're getting that those funds or not are people like Vacation Rental by Owner. Right. VRBO. You're not required, where it's an Airbnb, you're required to submit those occupancy taxes and then they cut the check. They, um, if, I, if I remember it right, um, uh, I, we rented our home for two months uh, about four or five years ago through VRBO and Ben's a real rule follower and if, it, it could be written differently now but on VRBO it says if you talk to your planner if your town requires an occupancy tax you must pay an occupancy tax so I guess that's their disclaimer exactly. Exactly. To, to encourage people to follow the rules so right. they don't they don't collect it right. VRBO doesn't collect it right. but they right. encourage you to follow your town's rules right. and that's what we did otherwise we wouldn't have known right. so I talked to Tammy I said Tammy what do we do and she said you know whatever mm -hmm. the percent of what you make you need to write a check to us and so we did. Um, You're going to find that most companies will do that as a disclaimer to protect their sure. self. Right. Yeah. And then the liability and then is, and the legality is left up to you as the homeowner whether you want to do it or not. Right. Well, I know that a lot of companies um, are in the rumor mill. I ha there are a lot of companies in Blowing Rock that get around our 28-day rule by booking two groups within 28 days. And they have all kinds of ways to loophole and explain it and stuff like that. So they might be a legitimate rental company and we'll rent your house and they'll even say, the owner will say, and I know this because of real estate, the owner will say, um, or the realtor will explain, in Blowing Rock, in the town of Blowing Rock, if you pay, pay town of Blowing Rock taxes, the rule is 28 days or more, unless you live at Royal Oaks, Glen Burnie, Chitola. There's a couple of houses on Pine Street. Uh, there's a couple of houses <coughs> that are in our central business zone that you can do it, but not very many that because central business zone allows um, so the they look at this property and say well if I'm not there I want to rent it while I'm not there and they hand it over to a rental agency or someone that handles the VRBO for them right there are people that handle VRBOs for other right for groups of homes that's right and they say well if I rent it to this guy for 28 days and we you know he's only there for 10 days they don't really they slip in another by law they that's could illegal be, they could be held accountable right and lose their license right and I, I wonder if I don't know how STR funds out Okay, so, that. so have they told you how their system works? No, or? that's proprietary. Well, of course. <laughs> I, I know, <laughs> that's their business plan. <laughs> I know, I know, but so can here, they find those people? Yes. Okay. Um, and one of the things that uh, we've sat through a couple of presentations through them and iCompass as well as host compliance, uh, STR Helper has uh, mechanisms within their platform that again connect to planning and zoning and can help guide them in drafting ordinances, uh, permitting. One thing that I'm not, I'm just trying to get us to get this program going. Um, I have one request, real quick. Yeah. When we get back into reality, Blaine Rock, I think what we would need is okay, it's going to cost us, the town, $7,250. Okay. If you would crunch the numbers, okay, so you can come to us and say this is what it's going to cost the first year, what it's going to cost us, 
and and or what are we going to gain say first year second year third year well if a hundred and twenty how many people a hundred and twenty five homes mm -hmm. okay let's say it's four thousand times a hundred and twenty five homes and what's the percent of occupancy tax let's do that number real question but there's no guarantee that 125 will right. even be rented. They've been identified. Right, right. Just look for a ballpark. Though. I'm looking for a ballpark number. number. I think it would pay for itself. What's Sue makes a great point to me. We're getting a third. Why do we have to pay a half? Uh, that's, that's, that was what his board came up with. Yeah, right? right. So we could counter with that. I mean, I don't see why the town residents have to pay 50%. And this this is a disclosure company. That's all they do. That's all they would do, right? That's a fair. Yeah, that's it's up to us to put the teeth in. In, in terms of ordinances and such. Yeah. But what they they'll do every day is sweep the internet for 22 different companies that rent. The the the, the elephant in the room is this is not going to go away. It is only growing out of leaps and bounds. The way leisure travel is happening, even business travel, they're getting away from uh, standard hotels and looking yeah. for a better experience that can accommodate multi-generational travel. Paul Paul's going to take the family to the mountains. He's not going to rent six different hotel rooms. He's going to rent one house to put all 15 people in. That's just the way it's going. So, well, I've been doing that for 20 years. And then the building out of banks, it's, it's been doing, they've been doing it there for 100 years. But it's been going on forever. Right. It's just now getting, you know, 10 years ago, there was no such thing as Airbnb. But now, let's, let me ask this. I think the $30,000 is a cut point for competitive bids. Yes. In town. So this is under the radar. We don't have to bid that. No. Well, the number you were looking for a minute ago, I thought Albert had figured it in his head. It's $30,000. So it would more than pay for itself. And that number, I came up with that number, that is a monthly rate. If we rented our house nightly, we could probably make $400 a night times $30,000, $12,000 versus $4,000. So that was a very, very conservative number. But that's based on 100% occupancy, right? It is. It is. Thank you. And one, one so that's the, why I went with the lower number. Sure. One of the things that we had talked about at, at that meeting that we had talked to this company when we were going through this, Tracy will tell you that he's worried that, you know, we, I personally feel that the town needs to come up with a better ordinance than what we've got to put some teeth in this. Yeah. There's no use in hiring this company to come in here to do this if all they're going to do is report back to us and we don't have a lot that we're going to do about it. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's my point. Tracy's worried that one time we talked about was worried, well, then you're going to start pushing people out to rent them in the county. Well, we know right now, we're talking with Wright and a couple of them, that the county probably will not be too far behind us in maybe hiring this company or, or, or another company. <coughs> and exacting some of the same ordinances that, that we're looking at. Because, you know, there's a lot into that ordinance, and I, you know, I, I'll just throw a couple things out that I'm interested in, would like to see. And one of them is the trash. Uh, I, you get tired of seeing the trash sitting out three or four days before it's time to be picked up, and then it sits there until either the next time it's rented or the other owners come up. But, you know, that's just one of the small things that, but if we don't put enough teeth into this, it doesn't stop the people. You know, if you say it's going to be a, a $500 a night penalty for your 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 offense, you know, uh, that's more than what most of them will rent per night for. And usually after a couple of years, you may not even need this company no more because then by word of mouth and the way it's spread, you're going to bring everybody pretty much into compliance. Yeah. So what, what's the last, go ahead. Um, is it a year to year lease? i got a couple questions. Yeah, it's a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and one of the things that I read or saw on the video is that you really need to have people come in for free and register. So that, therefore, 
that would be go along with the ordinance. If they're out of compliance, planning and inspection, well, we already have that and can, can get them for being out of compliance. Yes. Can you explain to me the rationale why bed and breakfast does not charge an does not have to charge an occupancy rate? They do. Yeah. Any short term no. rental in I thought in our ordinance. Our municipality it. has to pay it's on, to on the web website. It says that they don't have to? No, it says that they do have to. Oh, I saw in one of the things I thought it did. Okay. Well, so in terms of, of let me clarify a little bit on that okay. uh, in terms of registration with the property of a short term rental property, that's up to you guys. Uh, yeah. They don't have to right now there's no business license they have to have. And one of the things that is concerning for people in the destination marketing business is that you've got a lot of substandard properties out there that really a visitor should not be in because maybe it doesn't meet fire code, maybe it's not safe, maybe it's just nasty. And we don't want that reputation out there. If we were to go with SDR, they do give us a, uh, a uh, kind of a layout of how to set up permitting right. and everything from fire inspection to health inspection to parking to trash. Mm -hmm. you know, do they have enough trash receptacles? Uh, and that can all go through Kevin's department. And when Virginia is ready to put her her property in the in the market or in the pool she has to come get a permit from the town not anything that we necessarily charge for just so that we've got a trail and can keep up with what's going on we know that our guests are going to have a good experience and not be trapped yeah their recommendation was to go ahead and do the registration because then the people who are out of compliance that's right you've you, you've got it. That's right. And the people so, who come and get that permit, uh, one of the first things they have to do, uh, or once they get it, is be inspected. Because one thing that you don't want to happen is like happened uh, a couple of years ago when the Southern Carolina students got killed. Right now, the ordinance, we do not have anything in our ordinance, and it's not a state thing, that says short-term rentals has to have fire inspection, like motels, hotels, everybody right. else. Right. And, and that's a part of something that that you know that we need to talk about whenever we do start to draw this. Um, um, is, yeah, if I heard correctly, you can't give us numbers. Not individual. I, I understand, but what you can, and I think what you could give us, is of the total revenue that you get, you ought to be able to break it down percentage-wise as to how much comes from VRBO, how much comes from these different entities from a percentage. Yes, you're not um, giving us any totals, yes. but you only can give us you, you can give us that information. Like as a whole, the third party booking agencies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you ought to be able to do that. Yeah, and that's okay. about 10 10 percent. Right. Ten percent of, of the rest of our yeah. of the total hotels. Our taxes that we collect. Uh huh. Um, third party booking agencies. Um, make up about 10 percent is that normal it's an average of about 10 percent is that do they have a normal like a, no, a number that they're like a town should have a normal 10 per, uh, third party booking is it normally is no. what percent no if you go if you go to a place like for example the outer banks uh their percentage is going to be very high very high even if you're going through hatteras realty or Exactly. But what I'm saying is, even companies like uh, a, a rental company, they're also listing it on Airbnb and VRBO and HomeAway and Flipkey. Yeah, they're throwing every net they have out. Exactly. Exactly. Catch, catch. Exactly. Yeah, let me get back to what I'm getting at. A couple of years ago, we spent uh, an inordinate amount of time with the uh, people of Blowing Rock talking about short-term rentals and believe me that there was most of the people who responded were not in favor of anything less than 28 days so short-term rentals for a bunch of our people that live in our town is not on their radar 
Now that was several years ago. Things, things are changing. The, uh, the thing that a lot of this stuff wasn't being monitored because one, we didn't have anyone uh, on Fridays and Saturdays that was uh, really monitoring this unless there was a problem of noise or something like that. Um, whatever we decide to do, if, it, if and when we decide to do it, and this could be right now a little premature, is that we need to have a discussion, information discussion, with the people in our town about what we're thinking about this and have them, in a sense, understand how this can be monitored and, um, well, what, yeah, monitored, the whole, how the whole system can be monitored, what's in it for them, what are the pros and what are the cons, so that they can feed back to us. Because we don't need to get into something, depending upon, even with the revenue, and I clearly understand that this is where it's going. Um, without without some input from our citizens. I have a question. In How just a minute. Okay. Then we know, we already know this, that when we do it right, and that's communicating with the people, then we can make good decisions. And the, and the bond referendum was a perfect example of that. Absolutely perfect example. Number two, uh, three, is that whatever happens with this, it's going to cost us money internally. And we're going to have to pay for it. So not everything's going to be profit. Okay? This, this outfit had some really super ideas on charging things. Um, I want you to also consider this that you can go through your town and you can have, quote, precincts or neighborhoods that can be designated as available for VRBO or not. So that each neighborhood could, in fact, decide on themselves whether they want to be in a program like that. They pointed that out in here, that cities have that ability. Well, if cities can do it, so can we, particularly with GIS. Right. All right? So it may not be for everybody in the, in, in the town, particularly those people who just are dead set against it. The other thing that I would be interested in, and I assume you all would be too, that of the $7,500 a year that it's going to cost, what of that, how much extra revenue by being able to monitor all this, how are we going to get? Because right now, we're getting X. If we got, and we don't know whether it's 75 or 125, we really don't know. We don't know whether it could be 300. We don't know. How do they monitor individual homeowners who rent out their homes that don't use any of those services? They, they wouldn't be able to. Never would. No, that would be a lot of two. But I would be interested to know how many percentage wise do we get from people that are just flat out honest? Do we get them at all? Okay, that's all I want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. I have Thank you. a question for you. How, <clears throat> tell me about the latest situation where we caught somebody and what, did, what happened? We had, uh, and see, when was this? Sue reported just been December second. The week reported that week uh, after there was a suspected rental on Shady Lane. Right. Asked whether or not it was on Shady Lane. That's kind of shady. That's kind of shady. Um, we uh, determined which house it was. We sent a little letter uh, to the owners of the house and told them they were out of compliance. Right. And that they could not rent short-term rental at that location right. uh, in this case uh, they claimed they were doing it because 
of some work issues. They've not been able to work and they needed income. But now that's rectified and they said they will not do it anymore. And was this, so like, um, I think this is getting to what um, you were saying, Doug. I mean, what do we already have in place and how do we monitor it? So I'm imagining in my neighborhood, most of the residents, 31 of them out of 40, live in different states. So you send that letter to them, maybe they open it, maybe they don't. I mean, have we looked at, you know, tell me about one, tell me about another one. I'll have you, you ever one. gotten somebody to I'll pay you that for one. you? Albert, they paid the when they weren't in compliance. They paid five hundred dollars a night. Not that I'm aware of. Albert, well, this has I just can, been I started. Can tell you one okay. that I put up with, regardless of the money, my contention is that every homeowner in this town has the right to the quiet enjoyment of his home. And I believe that. For over a year and a half, a house across the street from me on Morningside was rented. It started out to Dale Jarrett, the race car driver, a very wealthy man, rented it to a friend of his in Hickory, who had a daughter at ASU, who by the second week of her moving in, had 21 cots in the house with people living in it. And I spent a year and a half with Scott Hildebrand and finally had to put a blowtorch under his rear end to get him to do anything. It was urination off the deck at 3 a.m., in the yard, in the street, cars screeching. Police just basically got tired of coming up there because nothing was ever going to be done about it. So finally, after the blowtorch got hot enough, they fined Dale Jerry $1,000 and he submitted the house to Bank of America deed in lieu of bankruptcy. Okay. That's so this that is, I contend. This is another never have happened. This is another example of why it would pay off for us because maybe they were renting for a year twenty one people in a house. That's yep. different than short term rental. That's a twin that's a year lease and 21 people in a house and in that oh, neighborhood. Oh, 21 came and went. No, but even, let's say it was 21 people. Let's say yes. it was how many people are allowed to, to rent in that neighborhood? Is it four unrelated, two I don't unrelated? Know, sure wasn't 21. And that's yeah. a planning and zoning issue and so that would help, uh, that would be worth it for us to find but, that kind of non-compliance too. Jim had a good point. I heard him whispering a little while ago. <laughs> A certain number of cars for each residence. Yeah. Okay, number one. I have a house down in Boone in a neighborhood. And in this particular neighborhood, you must have a parking sticker for, a, for every car that is assigned to that particular house. And you only get two of them. You can't get any more than that. Are you paying your occupancy tax, Jim? Uh, mine is a long term. Metal, I don't pay any occupancy tax. 31 days. <laughs> well, let me just say, that's a good idea. And Virginia, so, I and so, you, so what I'm saying is that there are ways to do that because there are certain there are certain roads in our town that we just cannot have extra cars parked on the road. The fire trucks can't even, couldn't even get by. And neighbors wouldn't like it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that we have to do, that we would have to do and planning and zoning to write the ordinances to do something like this for our town. But the other, but again, I want to get back to the thing. We've gone around on this before. It's, I know it's time to be visited because of what's happening in our country, in our country about BO, and that there is a demand for that. How great it is for us, I don't know. I really don't know for sure. But nationwide, it's a big thing. And it's better to be on the front end of this, so when it does come to us, and we do want it, that we are ready for it. But so are our people that live there. They need to be ready for it. They need to know the pros and the cons. 
So, My understanding of why we were looking at this is not to change our ordinance and allow short-term rental everywhere. It is to continue the same restrictions that we have. Certain areas are allowed to have short-term rental and some have been grandfathered in and some are on the 28-day cycle. The reason was to catch the people that were not paying occupancy tax, the people that were abusing um, and, and doing short-term rental in neighborhoods that were not allowed. And the problem is, is that the only way you know now is that neighbors turn them in. Neighbors don't want to turn in neighbors, okay? So that's the first problem. So this was not to change everything and blow rock to short-term rental. This was just to address the problem. I think we have an or we need to review our ordinances and send this to the planning board because we don't have a lot of meat in what we have um, about if you if you do this if you if you're doing short term rental and you're not allowed in your neighborhood these are the consequences and I think that's what we need to yeah, do. There are no consequences. Well, having it on the website was fabulous. There are. I, I, I was just. There are. It's on the website uh, now. They're fine. That's a way to let them know. Are there other other more effective ways to get well, to police this and to find this? I mean, it's two different things, right? Well, the ordinance has got to be beefed up. It, it is uh, insufficient to do what we want it to do. So, okay. Uh, I think we we have lots of examples from other towns, other areas, other states that we can probably a lot of their information without reinventing the wheel. But yes, this is a planning board uh, effort, I think, that uh, they would review this and uh, come up with their analysis of it, whether they think it's sufficient or insufficient. I think they'll find it insufficient. And then we move forward with trying to make some changes that would be presented to council and uh, hopefully be adopted at some point. There, there are a number of things that go into this conversation and. We're, we're kind of commingling these two topics, which is fine, um, because they are so related. But, you know, there are people that get away with the short-term rental uh, by renting a house for 30 days. And they have no intentions of being there 30 days. They, they plan on being there one week. <coughs> but if they have a lease and a contract that shows they have 30 days, they're legal. And a lot of them are doing that. Yeah. And what? A lot of them are doing that. That's that's one of the loopholes. That's one of the loopholes. So we thought that was happening, uh, and turned out it was not because the realtor brought us the contract and showed us that it was a 30-day lease. They didn't stay there 30 days. They came a couple of weekends. But was that it? No more people used the house. Uh, that I don't know. Uh, the, the the complaint we got was noise, uh, beer bottles, wine bottles, in thrown, uh, you know, on the one, one that I see is, well, I, I see them in my own neighborhood. I see one of them say, well, the, these people are my cousins. <laughs> and <laughs> next weekend, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't Family. believe it, niece, <laughs> nieces came in. And then there's their second cousin. <laughs> Pretty soon, it's, well, how big is this family? <laughs> and then, no. then the other thing that happens <laughs> is that one of them Colorado, huh? Somebody will I think we have to go to a birth certificate issue here. Anyway, places will still just, have uh, yeah. a three-bedroom house that they want to put up in the in a district that doesn't allow anything under thirty or twenty days, twenty-eight days, and. It may be three bedrooms, and typically, if you were looking at a, a, a sewer or a, a sewer, excuse me, a septic permit, you know, you would be limited to two people per bedroom, and so plus a few people, and that's what, for instance, Lake Lure has done. They've said two people per bedroom plus four extra people. So you know, if it's a three-bedroom house, you got a maximum of ten people. Well. And I know this from experience in other locations that you can have 25 people staying in a three bedroom house. And uh, Ski Mountain. Yeah, Ski Mountain will do that. <laughs> and uh, uh, other locations, towns, are dealing, they deal with exactly the same issues. Well, so we there's, a, there's a, a public health issue as well. Right. Are we, and, and we, in that conversation with our citizens, 
we probably need to say, who are we? Are we, are we a town that is basically a motel? I mean, that's you're going to turn the neighborhoods into motels. No, we're not changing anything. Okay. All we're worth looking at right to now do is, is the how do we enforce, okay. how do we enforce the you. current situation? Thank you. I'm just jumping ahead. Well, yeah. Let me interject this right quick, and Ed and Tracy can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, a lot of this discussion will kind of co mingling into one thing. The TDA has voted, we're going on with this project. All we're doing is asking the town if they would pay 50% of it and if they would work on putting a better ordinance in. But as far as this going on in, the TDA has already voted that this is going on. And I, I need to answer this, Ed, before we... This is a different <coughs> issue, but it is an issue that goes into this is present issue. BB, I mean, bed, uh, what's it? People at San Francisco threaten the city. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And that's why they're doing this. Right. If you don't know where the money comes from, I think you've already said that. They just send you a check. Right. Well, probably some of that's coming from illegal less than 28-day rentals. That's the reason I'm saying the town ought to cover half of this because y'all need to know that way worse than we do. So I'm saying, and I'm not an attorney, but if you take that money that's generated from an illegality, where do we stand on precedent for the next guy? It's, it's a matter of... Did you find out something yeah. about that, Albert? It's in your um, it's what it's um, we were afraid that if a person were renting illegally mm -hmm. and we were receiving oxygen tax i know there's been a lot of talk about well if we're doing that uh, we're basically condoning the action and we're setting a precedent that allows them to do that and we have it from the school of government uh, saying oh, yeah. that is not the case no statute nor court opinion that prohibits a local government from levying taxes on commercial activity that may violate zoning regulations or other laws. Uh, the town has an obligation, not just, it's not just a, that we're not setting a precedent, the town has an obligation to collect the occupancy tax on all businesses that rent accommodations, whether or not they are in a legal area or not. Uh, so they did come back and tell us that we got this late um, and uh, that kind of, you know, we kind of were, were glad on that. So we're not doing anything illegal by accepting their money. As a matter of fact, we are required to get that money from them, even if they weren't supposed to be renting. And you consider that a legal opinion? This came from the attorney at School of Government. Okay. And see, not only that, Albert, that has some, that has some yeah. basis. Not only that, we're accepting a lump sum amount of money. The town's not aware of where it's coming from. We're relying on the vendor to send it to us. So we, we have a point of ignorance here. But it, when you get in the um, courthouse, that makes for a horse race. It does. You know, so are you I, saying that we need to go to, like, if, the, if, it, if we pushed it to the um, planning, um, who would this be to? Planning? Plan. Okay. If we said planning, Please look at our ordinance and its effectiveness. Would they talk to the police department? Would they do a, uh, some kind of meeting to like? Unlikely, because the police department is not in charge of enforcing ordinances. Okay. So How, the zoning administrator is in charge of that. So the zoning administrator, and they get some information from other towns and right. everything, and then they would come back to us and say, these are the three things that need to be changed. That, that is a strategy. Okay. I mean, is, do you think that's the strategy? Yeah, I, I we think do we can think of lots of simultaneously ways. or before we do this. Well, they're doing it anyway. Well, they're doing no, it anyway. Anyway. All we have to do is come up with, as a community, the ordinance that states here you are, TDA, this is what the town ordinance is now. Do we charge for a permit? Do we not charge for a permit? Am I correct, Ed? That's correct. So, do we decide to charge? I mean, now here's my follow on this. If our fire department's having to do inspections and our plant, our uh, uh, building inspector has to go in 
That's costing the town money. Should we not charge for a permit? Just do it for fall. What do you think? <laughs> I think so, personally. Now, their recommendation. I have a question. Not to. Can I have a question for you about this company? Who owns the information that they collect? Well, we would have access to it every day. And it's a fresh batch every day. So, I mean, I would say that So they, they, I know they own the program. Right. This, the, but how, are, how do we get, how do we get the inf all the information? On page 11, this is spelled out, Jim. Uh, uh, yes. Do, do the municipal, <coughs> it should say does. Does the municipality actually own the data? The municipality has full access and rights to all data. They can request data exports and reports at any time, ensuring that they have full control over the data. So we need to download that stuff and save well, it. I guess. I guess my point is, once you, once you say thank you, we we've had enough. How? Do, I mean. They don't keep sending you reports. No, no, it's not. I can tell you that. You know, Beach Mountain just recently uh, signed a contract with STR, and I think there's uh, one year of full service and a second year of guidance that is at a much reduced price. Okay. So basically, they're showing so there's them how other, to do it. So from what I, from what you just said, then there's there's a different scale yes. of cost depending upon. What you need, right. there's sort of yeah, like a menu there's of tiers, what you want. Correct. There okay. are tiers, and then it is also going to be based upon the number of rental properties that you have. Mm. We're between 100 and 250, mm -hmm. so we are at that. If we want the full we think, reporting software, yeah, yeah. we're going on down the road here. Yeah, we, 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 I think we got two two things. Okay. Doug says you're going to incorporate this. You're asking. No, the TA is. I'm the TA. Yeah, I'm, I'm the TA. Thanks, <laughs> Doug. Well, I thought you had a tattoo. He's going to pay the bill. Right. <laughs> You're asking for a cost sharing. Correct. The TA was asking for a cost share on this and to, as in conjunction as this is going along, as if the, as if the, the council would look at redoing the ordinance to put a little well, teeth into it. Then then we need to update an ordinance so we're not a paper tiger. Is that what we're saying? Right. I, th I think the only thing that we're asking for is, is or that the TDA was asking for here and is, yeah, right. is for us to look into a oh, cost right. share, correct? Yeah. And why don't we look at that if we have the time in February and we'll look at how the town can supplement with TDA since TDA has moved forward. Can I make yes. this suggestion? Yes, sir. And for clarification for the paper and civic association, those funds are not ours. Those are our visitors' dollars. Right, exactly. Right. So taxpayers are not going to be paying that. So when I say that the town should cover half of it, mm -hmm. why not just pull it out of the one-third allocation that the TDA already gives the town? That's why it's none of your I money. Well, I don't disagree. I leave. I leave that. That's just up to our town manager to determine. Well, that, that one third needs to go towards infrastructure, though. Yeah. Tourism-related infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You might. Would qualify? Would this qualify? Well, I mean, that's that's how you want to define it. I don't know that it's a marketing expense either. Well, my, my okay. My thoughts on that. That's right. I, I mean, that's a mute point. I think that uh, we're we're we're. we're in council meetings at time to make decisions what is best for our citizens and best for our community. That's why they put us in these positions. And we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, if it comes out of tax dollars, well, uh, the town will ultimately benefit and so will the citizens. So, uh, Ed, I think, you know, I think we should. Can I make a statement? Yes, sir. Um, this is not, not unique that we're considering something like this. this. This is a problem, at least statewide, and I'm sure it's nationwide, but I see things on the list server about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I know it's a topic uh, that North Carolina Resort Towns mentioned cities talks about a lot. Uh, there really needs to be a grassroots effort, in my opinion, coming from lots of municipalities that are especially uh, areas that have a high degree of tourism, 
uh, your coastal towns, your mountain towns, we need legislated remedies available to us from the North Carolina legislature. And the North Carolina Resort Towns Convention Cities has been working on that. I've been trying to, uh, the, the occupancy tax laws are different all across the state. One entity may have a legislative document that says they have to split it 50-50. Another one says you have 100% and do what you want. Another one says the uh, TDA gets uh, one third and the town gets one uh, 66. And you can build a football arena. Yeah, you know, and build a convention center in Jacksonville, North Carolina. That just happened there. <laughs> so the occupancy tax laws, if you look up Blowing Rock, and look up occupancy tax at the North Carolina General Assembly. If you put those keywords in, there are 100 legislation documents that mention blowing rock and occupancy taxes. They change over and over and over uh, where something is re-emphasized. Or I was showing Tracy uh, last week uh, 10 pages of 10 per page. Um, we had a question because we have an entity that's only paying us 3%. And we're wondering, why are they only paying us 3%? Well, that's the way it's always been. Well, why is that the way it's always been? They're supposed to be paying us 6%. <laughs> uh, so we're working on that. Nicole and I are working on that together and uh, uh, trying to get to the bottom of some legislation that involves Caldwell County. So all of this is, is fairly confusing. Uh, because the state has allowed municipalities and counties different legislation, local act legislation. So we need some meat from the uh, state level. We, need, we also need the state to give us some kind of authority to collect. When people don't collect, we're pretty much up the creek. Uh, we can demand they pay it. We can't go take it out of their bank account. We can't shut them down. Can you so, put a lien on their property? That's an attorney question, I guess. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> so we don't have Just nearly like enough remedies judge. available to us to deal with the situation. And it's, it's always been that way. So um, this is something, there are other companies that do this, and I know that uh, the TDA looked at another company and y'all decided obviously that STR Helper was the one that met what you wanted to do the best. Um, but this this is a topic that's going on nationwide and especially at state level and not just about where you can rent and all that, but how do we get what's due us based on our law of collecting our audit tax. And that's when we pass on it. Planning, planning, planning and zoning. Using that them come to the program, bring it to us. Each okay. mountain, the closest one to us. Is but I mean, is there a, which other ones in, in North Carolina, do you know? Uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, uh, yes. the uh, Ocean Isle. Ocean Isle is? Yeah, yeah. There are others, those are the two that come by, those three. I'm surprised that you the hotel list? didn't Not of those. ask for this. Uh, yeah. Virginia. I'm, I'm surprised that there are hotels and hotels. They get, I get one. They get it on their bill. No. Okay. They're losing business. Oh, why yeah, and that's, why that's, are that's they asking for this? That's something that never made sense to me because whether I'm a, a, on a single family house and I'm renting out, let's say I'm doing that legally. Yeah. Let's say I, I can share with you two different situations. We had a customer, a, a citizen bought a house. I knew him because he worked at the North Carolina League of Municipalities. Right. And he and I were close, and uh, so he told me he was going to rent the house. Well, he did, and they put it in a rental program, and they were renting it almost every weekend. Yeah. And we were receiving our monthly reports just like we were supposed to. We were collecting good revenue off of him. And uh, then, without us even kind of noticing it, uh, it, it went away. And so our thought was, okay, they have so stopped renting or they've sold it or right. something of that nature. So uh, about a year and a half later, um, somebody told me they had rented that house. And I said, well, who'd you rent it from? And they said, oh, we did it to so-and-so. And, -so. and it, was a, it was a real estate office in, in Valley Cruces. Yeah. And so we called that real estate office and said, we understand that you're still renting the house. Some of the neighbors were telling us that it was still in the realm. 
And that realtor said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got that property. Uh, and uh, we host that, and it was still the same owner. He had just turned it over to somebody else. And uh, she, the owner of that real estate company said, yes, I'm collecting the occupancy tax and the state sales tax. And I said, okay, we haven't been getting any reports. We haven't had a report in a year, over a year. Oh, well, I'm paying that to Watauga County. <laughs> and I said, well, you're not authorized to pay that to Watauga County. We have a 6% occupancy tax. So I got on the phone and I called Larry Warren, tax administrator. And I said, Larry, I got a situation I need your help with. And he, as soon as I started telling him who it was, he said, uh, we got a problem too. As a matter of fact, we're taking out a lawsuit against them because they're not paying it to us. They're collecting the state sales tax and the oxy tax and they're keeping it. They weren't reporting it at all. So that is a situation. But then the other situation is that when and people, like somebody said, people are reluctant to tell on other people, even though they really ought to, especially if they're they're renting uh, and, and if they're in competition. Well, they shouldn't have to. People should follow the law. But, that's right. And if everybody was honest, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We'd have a whole lot more money coming in. And we wouldn't have any issues. But you if one person who legally rents and the next door neighbor is renting legally and one of them is collecting the oxy tax, and the other one is not, that's 12.75% difference. This person is at a competitive disadvantage because this person is doing it illegally. Right. And that's exactly why the hotels should be saying, hey, they, they should be screaming. I know. I'm, I'm really surprised that this is not whoever's in charge of the hotels and motels in Blown Rock. They're renting all they want to right now. Huh? No, they only have 30% occupancy. They're not full. Our hotels and motels are not full. Well, right now. They're losing no. business. Right now, they're running 30% occupancy because of the time of the year. Where are y'all getting the that? break in is probably five. Where are you getting that number? I'm saying, I'm saying January. I'm not saying for the year, because nobody business. really knows that. No, what I'm speaking of, you, 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 you would have to get that number from something like Smith Travel Research, uh -huh. and all of our mom and pop properties do not report that. Uh -huh. The closest, because they don't have to. No, what I only, The only people that have that kind of number is Smith Travel Research, and the only people that give that are branded hotels. Our one property in Blowing Rock that does it, two, Chitola and Holiday Inn. Does the Green Park not do it? No. Okay. no. Mm. There's no there's no reason for it. They're not branded. There's no reason for them to do that. Because if they did, then we'd need more occupancy tax. Not necessarily. Now, there used to be a time when a lot of cash would go through a front desk. That's not the case anymore. The issue would become then you could figure on a mom and pop hotel exactly the kind of volume they're doing, and they don't want you to know that. Well, yeah. you can tell by how many cars are out front too. You can, yeah. I mean, we don't. We, we can get average daily rates, an idea of that. We can get rev par. They're making revenue per available room, uh, but when it comes to what their actual occupancy is, nobody has a real number without really sit down and get the final yeah, survey. Unless the owner exactly tells, tells you. And that's just, well, I, this sounds like the same situation then. Right. It, all that being said, okay, quick. In an effort to move this along, um, I think we need to bring this before the council in uh, February with some of the questions that, that have been asked. The other thing is I don't think we need to bring before council a directive to planning board that we need to address our ordinance, have them review other ordinances in nearby towns, and not only to address short-term rental, but to address trash, recycling, the trash cans that actually is in here further back. In that ordinance, you're saying? In that ordinance, because... Um, the, parking. The, and parking. And parking. So I think those are... But I think planning can really come up. And I think they can come up and then come back to us with the information so that we'll have it. And we could have a special meeting every week if we wanted to. All right, that being said, uh, we have, uh, Tracy, were you going to do the economic development as well? That we've, I know we've been bouncing back and forth. No? Okay. Well, are we, is the bias of the board 
with Sue. I didn't hear anybody else say anything. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. Mine is, and I want to understand, and everybody understand. I'm not putting money at the bottom of the ground, but I'm not putting it above peaceful enjoyment properties. By God, short-term rentals, and I don't care what anybody says, is a destroyer of neighborhoods. Albert, we're all in agreement with you. I, all we're saying is we're discussing the existing the ones, the, the, the existing yeah. ones that are that are renting that shouldn't be, that should be enforced. We have numerous properties that fall under that zoning category, okay? We've got to make sure that they're paying their way. But I am not a proponent of making Blowing Rock a Myrtle Beach. But it's, right now we have a little cancer. In my opinion, it's growing. I think that's where everybody here is in unison saying, let's go forward with this, yeah. let's get planning, put, come up with something, and, you know, where is the course? I, I agree. I, I, and I was wor that's why I was getting worked up. And then Sue clarified, we're going to handle the problem we have now. We are not opening this up for anywhere else in Blowing Rock. I mean, truly, if, if short-term rentals were a hot thing, then um, uh, Royal Oaks has seven or eight properties that have been available for sale for a year. Those properties can rent nightly. And they've been sitting on the market for a year. If it were a hot commodity, then those things would have sold, and they haven't. So we need to just look at what we're, what we're what's going on now and take care of what it is now. Think, we don't have, we don't have to open it up to no, I think TDA's your neighborhood done a good or job. my neighborhood. TDA's done a good job of finding I, a I way to track it. They open it up. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I don't yeah. think we, or be worried if somebody builds a property that they're not going to be able to, you know, make their. We made that real clear the last two people that wanted to do it. Yeah. I think what you got, what we got to be looking at, is clearly, the person that is visiting towns, whether short term or long term, is looking at a different kind of experience, and that presentation that we had at, at the. Um, the meeting that you all had, sh show that to us. That the things are changing, and they're not necessarily looking for a hotel room right. or a suite. Right. I'm looking for a unit that maybe my people can. A house in. with the kitchen, yeah, so they don't have to eat out every night. So, well, what we need to do is to just be aware that that could come, in, whether it's three or five years from now, it's going to, it's out there, and we need to be prepared. Jim. Well, we, I agree with you, though. Let's take care of what we got now. Yeah, yeah. I agree with Jim as well. Yeah. All right. Well, Ed, and clarify I got, that I got too, a question too. there. Okay, we started out with the uh, welcome short-term rental software. Now we're two, uh, a little after 2 p.m. Uh, short-term rentals conversation. Are we just extending what we've been doing? I think so. Okay. We've still got some other things that haven't been brought up that we need to mention okay. for this short-term rentals conversation. So, uh, And those things be... What page you on? Um, the the next uh, well let me point out to you I'm, I'm sure you saw that there is a copy of the contract that an SDR helper this bear cloud software SAAS agreement that begins on page 12 and ends on page 28 that was included uh, so that you would have an idea of what it is the TDA is asking us to participate in and seeing the legal ease for that particular uh, agreement that we would sign with SDR if the council should at the February meeting decide that that is a good idea. So y'all will out. Are we going to have a test on this tomorrow morning? <laughs> okay. Well, and we really have until February because we're, we're still in negotiation about how much the town's going to pay. Well, I think it's good too, though, that yeah, I think we're all in unison here. I think that it's neat that I Tracy, you said Beach Mountain's doing it. Yes. And I think that's good to see. And I think Ed made the point, Jim made the point. I think most of us did. This is up and coming. It needs to be enforced. And we've got the problem. Let's solve the problem. And you can check with the beach. Yes. They, they have just begun it. Uh, oh. We were talking about doing it before I left, and we were well, trying to figure out two what issues. will be our best course action. Mm -hmm. They started a little bit. Whether we will have so. Uh, 
beach and uh, for seven yeah. devils, both Sugar Mountain, all three are totally different positions in that the entire municipal boundary is open to short term. Okay, right, let's go. So they're already up into it. They have a different purpose. Oh, yeah. Those are really, I mean, we're a tourist town, but they are a tourist town that absolutely thrives on having that tourism there, and they don't exist without it. We do. Okay. Was there something else that went with this besides the arena? Because I'm going to say reviewing this until February. Yes, no, no, nothing else there. Um, so there were two things, really. How much we would help the TDA pay for it, and then asking the planning. Yes, well, uh, that's exactly right. That doesn't have to be part, a board meeting, right? For this part that for the for the item uh, short term mm -hmm. mental helper. All you're, all you're doing is deciding among yourselves, is this a good idea or is it not? And are we willing to participate and pay part of the cost? And if we are, what is that cost going to be? TDA's already doing it. This is done here. Right. Okay. That's good. Well, they're doing it. Right now, they're doing it if the town participates because they haven't discussed paying the entire amount. So if they, if the town ends up saying no, we're not interested in participating in this with you, they're going to have to take it back to the TDA and, and see if the TDA is willing to fund it entirely. Nicole, you need to find out if we can use the infrastructure money out of the occupancy because I don't know. But you're not asking. I know. An answer now. There's bias right now. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll give it to you, but I won't. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think it's inappropriate, but there's not going to be any action taken, so you can, you can, if you have something that you need for the rest to think about in regards to that contract, you're certainly not out of order to, to state it. Well, I'm just pulling it's not 30 pages instead of 28. I'm sure that can be changed. We, we, we will see if we can add some to it. <laughs> that 28 pages deal with these people. <laughs> Wait a minute, bear watching. <laughs> that is one heck of a contract for such a little thing. <laughs> and then, uh, there's $12,000 in the sure. paper. <laughs> you know, the guy who wrote the program is a manager. When I read that, all I could think of was Do what? The contracts is all in their favor. Oh, that was it. Yeah. I can tell you that. Short -term yeah, we're getting ready to have some okay. conversation about That's that. That's it. Uh, uh, subject to the moderator. Uh, all right. The, the promoting year-round tourism is that the next section yeah, that you this, feel? The right? next, what page are you on? We're we're we're, we're looking uh, at yeah, short-term short rental conversation mm -hmm. in page twenty-nine. Yep. Now, what ended up with the short term? What's going to be the next? You. That part we're getting ready to decide now. So uh, Sue has already made a, a statement which probably is going to be generally accepted uh, of how we're going to lay up some responsibility to the planning board to, to come back. But there were a couple things that needed to be cleared up. Um, and we made a copy, uh, page 29 and 30, uh, are taken directly from the comprehensive plan. And by the way, Charlie and Virginia, I brought you your copies. They're over there by uh, the wall. The top two there, I think, have signal line, uh, names on And the, you, you don't need it right now, but because I've made the copy, but uh, we, we also have a couple of other copies from you that did not bring your comprehensive plan with you. Um, there, okay, the, the, the council has changed, all right? It is not huge change, but the comprehensive plan was a plan that was envisioned by citizens uh, with work groups and council adopted. So this is part of the 2014 comprehensive plan, um, and in that, uh, promoting year-round tourism. The, the, the citizens and the council said, we want to become a year-round tourist destination and grow the share of the regional tourism market that is captured by the community. 
Uh, and we also wanted to be a year-round destination, not just a seasonal destination. Uh, and part of that was that we would increase the amount of short-term rentals. Now, if that is no longer the case, we probably need to doctor the comprehensive plan at some point. We're obviously not doing that today. Um, but there, I think there has been a, a feeling among staff at least, and staff's not important here, it's what council wants, but that they thought the previous council wanted to move forward with short-term rental in at least another area, R6M. And of course the We have meeting, a zoning map with us. Uh, did not bring. Is it online? I don't ever remember the discussion of that back council. Um, you talking about in the conference of plan discussions? I no, wasn't here for that. So I can state what you just made. Staff thought. Where'd they get that idea? They thought because there was an interest in having short-term rentals in additional areas of the town that came from the statements made by some citizens. Now, if, if there was no vote taken uh, as far as these citizens want more short-term rentals and these citizens don't want more short-term rentals. So uh, somehow they made it. Huh? Well, there wasn't a vote, there was a survey, benchmark, right. done yep. a survey and it came back pretty much overwhelmingly. There was only one area that did not offer short-term rental that came back on the, on the survey that was actually willing to offer short-term, that had a higher percentage of uh, willing to offer short-term rental. And that was where? That was uh, on Ransom, Ransom Street. Okay. And that was what I was referring to okay. in, in that. And and I, I don't know if Mr. Riddle built those in the back of his mind saying, you know, that's really why I'm building those and I want short-term rental and I think I'll get it, so that's why I did it. Um, but there was at least thought amongst staff, I'm told, that they thought that that area was, if there was any area in town that was right for short-term rentals, that was it. And that may have changed. You know, Ransom Street has transformed. Uh, it's no longer what it used to be. Correct. And it's a nice lovely. It, um, it really going is. In there and people are really redoing homes. And and they came and spoke at that um, for that Public request Green. by mm -hmm. I, I don't know, what was his name Rick and yeah. just said you know this is our family home we don't want short term rental so if the if we are at a point where council is content with the short term rental areas that we have and you don't want this anywhere else. We, we kind of, I'm thinking that there probably needs to be a revision made so that we don't have people thinking, if I do this, they're going to change their mind. Well, if the only place you want it is where it is now and you're not willing to expand it, we really ought to put that out there. Well, but, and, but what kind of, I mean, it's kind of stupid for somebody to put something in thinking we might do it. That's stupid. Yeah, and, I mean, and you I buy a know. property where it's already the way you want it to be. Yeah. I mean, that, that's like building a mountain in the middle of the ocean. Maybe. Or on a commercial <laughs> property, the guy says, I'm going to put in a nightclub next door here. You, you can't do that. I got a house here. It's commercial property. I can put... Right. I, yeah, put I'm a they put a strip yeah. I mean, oh, it wow. said it, there's a chance that the that we might do that. There's this this is full of chances of we might do something or export. I mean, I don't think that. Do you really think that's necessary? Then we I need to go know. through this whole thing and I mean, take out I all the so. other that, chances that, of what might be ne might happen. That's a wish list. Yeah. Yeah. It, this it, is an wish list. Yeah. But it was a wish list that was adopted. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, it's, but it's, it's was, oh, was he it's using that. that against us? I mean, that's kind of. But Virginia, there are people in our town that are using the, the uh, comprehensive plan as a catalyst to get what they want. Okay. Or an attempted catalyst. Now you can't say this board 
has not expanded short-term rentals. We just approved a 21-unit hotel. If that's not short-term rentals, they're not accounting taxes. <laughs> But that was that's in commercial. central business. I mean, that's why I was asking for the map. Does everybody understand the zoning here? I, I don't know if they do or not, but it, it is central business, like you're saying. Okay, I mean, it shows where you can do everything. You can have a boutique apartment where they're putting that. There happened to be a house there. That is already in place. We did not have to vote on a boutique hotel going in there. That's not what we were voting on. This guy wanted to have a, a, a short-term rental. It wasn't allowed there. Right. It, there's a chance maybe if we change the zoning, it would be allowed there because of this. But it's not already allowed there. Right. Those right. are two different things. And, and Virginia, that, that, that comprehensive plan is the way I always looked at business. We always came out with a plan, a three-year plan, five-year plan, and darn it. And we adopted it on the boards. But that three-year plan, five-year plan, it changed. And that's just part of it. Well, I mean, th and this directional. should be this should be. An, uh, I, I'm not trying to beat this horse and kill it. This should be mm -hmm. a live thing, and we should grow and everything. And if you're having issues with somebody holding it, you and saying, "Look, well, they you they said there's a chance that on Ransom Street we can do this." If that's causing you a problem, and we need to take it out. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the comprehensive plan is a guiding document. Right. It is what the citizens and the council said they want to see. If it says we want to see it and you don't, it ought not to be in there. Okay, so, so. I get it. Well, so. on, on there are all these houses, once again, in the, just so y'all know, they're in, at Glen Burnie is zoned for short-term rental. They're not selling. Royal Oaks is zoned for short-term rental. They're sitting on the market, not selling. Let me ask you something. You're in real estate. This was done in 2014. Okay. How many homes has have been completed or under construction on ransom right now that were not there in 2014? Well. Twelve. They, they've well. been renovated. Homes have been renovated. Right. Okay. Renovated those, and Those built. four, the new ones, those four mm -hmm. have been built. Mm -hmm. There's um, three. I sold that empty lot, um, and they're building three um, bungalows. So my point be, it, things change. Yeah. And I agree with that, that we need to change this. Hey, you understand that the comprehensive plan is a strategic plan. It's trying to look out 10 years. That's why we're here to this meeting, is to develop a tactical plan, which means the one something that you can operate within 12 months, because now we know. So these are, as you said, they're guidelines. If there's something in here that, you, that is either A, confusing, or people are looking at it to say, this is the law, well then, they've got, then that's not true. This is nothing more than a plan or a budget, if you will. Do you think that was miscommunicated? No, I don't think so. Uh -huh. I think it, it, Charlie Cole I wasn't here, so I should have participated in survey. It's a but wish. No. This is what we think. And I remember we did that. We said, as a matter of fact, we looked at our town and we said, so what kinds of strategic marketing entities do we have in this town? And, and this well, is not unusual. Yeah. Are, are you thinking of another area where, where we should make it uh, short-term rental available? No, I was saying that staff, uh, the planning, they said if the Bowling Rock were right for any change, it would be in the R6M, right. which is ransom. Right. Or and office That doesn't mean that it is right. It, like I said, it's going through a lot of transition. Yeah. Could I mean, also happen in office. It's amazing how beautiful so many of those houses are on ransom. So yeah. I, you know, it could I like old houses, happen. so I would be more prone to buy one of those older houses that's been redone than I'd be prone to, to build. Well, so how would you recommend that we change this? Day? Well, I, I'm not saying that we need to actually change, but we need to communicate to people up front that this would be changed whenever we do an update on the comprehensive plan. But if this is a 
uh, a goal, an idea that the town is no longer has any interest in pursuing, we need to tell the people when they come in right up front that, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, our goal has changed since then. This was a previous council. Uh, we no longer have any interest in expanding short-term rental district. Uh, so it is what it is, and don't buy something or build something thinking it's going to change. Well, you you might want to think about pushing that down to the realtors. We're, we, we know that Ransom Street is not a short-term rental unless you buy in Glen Burnie or Royal Oaks or Chatola. It is not rent. But who was the person there advocating to have this change? Huh? Who was the person at? They're, they're realtor. They're realtor. So that's the problem. He needs to be sat realtors. down. But, and they, but they know the zoning. They're not all realtors. Some of them are retired attorneys. No, but. Yeah. He, so, I mean, seriously, that's where the problem is. Someone misled this guy. Unless he, I mean, but it sounds like he well, came. Well, he said, now I can't, I can't speak. He said that he never, in, he didn't envision it being short-term rental when he started. That and his realtor, realtor gave him that idea. Well, that realtor needs to, uh, <laughs> well, Ed, it's happened before. Your, your watch. But I suggest staff took great liberty in conjuring up such a thought. Now, it came from the realtor. It would be able to, you would, I could sell the snot out of Blowing Rock if it were less than 28 days. Well, but I mean, that's it, not what it is. It's not easy to go down and change our zoning director's ideas. Maybe I need to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, have, have, I would have to what, have a with Luger, conversation to find out exactly Luger, what the you? belief is. But... Um, I you know, and at the, um, when, when you have, we have breakfast meetings in Blowing Rock, the realtors do, and it needs to be, so remember that there's nowhere that 28 days or less or, is allowed. These homes are 28 days or more. Remember when you're selling property in Blowing Rock, maybe that's what we need to say. Right. If you want to sell a property that's you need to go outside of the town of Blowing Rock. There's plenty of properties available. You need to sell in Chitola, those homes there. Maybe that's what we need to do because somebody's getting misinformed, getting misled. Well, it's not our staff that's misinforming people. Well, and this isn't misleading. Yep. Right. So, any, anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the only thing I want to say here is when you look at this, look at item number two. It's the word, is the operative word there to me is explore mm -hmm. the marketing potential. Now what that means to me as a council person is that, that, if, that if a need arises, we want to look into it. Are there other areas that we should look at somewhere in the future that might or should be possibly changed from this to this? But you, and that, then there's a whole process that has to take place before you can even do it. And that. you nailed it when you said explore. That's what it says. We're not saying explore. we're going to do it. Yeah, explore. that's all. Investigate. We're going to be taking explore. some liberties with that word. Okay. Yeah. But, right. but, but staff doesn't, staff doesn't have a dog in the fight. They don't care. We're not advocating to have anything changed. But I, I thought you said staff had some idea. Staff. I, I can be corrected, but I thought you intimated that staff somehow construed that maybe we wanted it on Ransom Street. Staff construed that there was a desire to expand short-term rentals at some point in the future and that they made a statement that if that were ever going to happen, the R6M district, which included Ransom Street, was where they thought it would be practiced. Well, that's what he grasped. Can we change their process? But a lot of that uh, was based on the benchmark survey that went out. Thank you, Dr. You got to remember the staff done a lot of that based on what came back on that survey. You know, I mean, you could send that, like Sue said a second ago, you could send that survey out right now with as much as Ransom Street has changed, mm -hmm. and you will not get the same results as what we got when that was sent out then. And it, it depends on who your respondents were, too. You know, if you, if you had uh, five respondents, but all five of them happened to be realtors who owned a house on Ransom Street, your response is definitely going to be different. The only thing I ask you to do is instruct 
staff to uh, stay away from the from conjecture. Really? All right. where, where does let, it say let, let about this RM6? Because I, I know I've read that somewhere. That was their work. That they pulled that together. No, it's a, it it. Um, well, it's, it's a zoning code. Yeah, it's in the zoning code that that's possible. That's. Rules is also it's uh, with conditional use permit, I think. I'd have to pull it up. But the but um, Roy Oaks had to come before the um, zoning board and get their short term rental permission. That happened so long ago. Well, Roy Oaks was actually, actually grandfathered in mm -hmm. pretty much when okay. it was changed because it was already in existence. Mm -hmm. Ransom Street has not come before the planning department and gotten short term rental permission, right? No. 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 So, okay. Let me ask you something real quick, guys. In that same plan, it was relocating the visitor center to accessibility location on Valley Boulevard. I guess that's pretty much dead in the water now. Okay. So that can be, they, they decided to long-term lease the Robbins home. So when, that, when do we do another comprehensive plan? That it's obviously 10 will years. fall off. Yeah. And they'll probably buy it when it's all said and done, I think, uh, within three years. I hope they don't come to us for a half a million dollars. Don't worry. Use tax dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, Charlie? Huh? Who? You talking about the chamber? Yeah, they're talking about buying the house. Right, they're not going to ask for it. No, no, they're not going to ask for it. I think that was the tone issue. You know. Yeah, that, that was that was for you people that have bad hearing on the back back end over here, okay? Us, I, I'm always afraid when people hear things like that, they run out with it and start screaming. Mm -hmm. at the good point, good point, thank you. So is uh, there more short-term rental conversation? Yes. Um, the what page we are now? All right, so... Uh, well, 31 gives you a definition of STR, and it's that that's less than 28 days. Obviously, uh, if they're renting for more than 28 days, uh, they can still do that up to 90 days. Anything under 90 days is a short term. I mean, it's, it's what's the proper word? It's still a short term rental, but not classified the same way. They're still required to pay occupancy tax. Um, so, uh, you know, a 90 day rental or a 60 day rental, somebody comes up and rents a house for a couple months in the summer or something like that, they still have to pay, but they're not guide, uh, they don't have to go by the guidelines. Sales tax on that. I'm sorry? Sales tax. Who sales pays, tax, yes. Who sir. pays that to who? They pay it to the state, the property owner. So and the state's the getting hooked for some money too, and yes. you know, they don't have a sense of humor about not getting that money. No, they don't. And uh, uh, okay. whenever those people, whenever the owners who or managers, whoever's collecting that tax, they should be collecting the six percent for the right. town, and they should be collecting the six point seven five for the state. And uh, uh, there have we tried to tie some legislation in because sometimes the state gets theirs and the town doesn't. Uh, so there's checks and balances we see that would be beneficial if they were just implemented. Uh, you know, sales tax records, are, are, they're not public. So we don't have access to those sales tax records to see who's paying sales tax on short on rentals. Uh, they're, not, they're not available to the boy at all. That's right. The spirit of transparency. How come they're not? I don't know. Isn't that a population issue? That's... I don't know. The I sales tax, yeah, yeah, under 5,000. Yes. The population, they will yeah. That means that we were Charlotte, you could see the sales tax revenues. Mm -hmm. Oh, see 5,000? Yes. I, I did not know that. Yes. Well, we're 5,000. That's true. We've run into that. With summer. 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 <laughs> well, summer. Well, we didn't ask for it. We so we get half the numbers. We had a cluster of boom one time about that, and we found out that, yeah, well, we can't find out. I got a question <laughs> on the six percent okay, tax. Do we get any of that above thirty days? In other words, if you rent a home for two months, do you yeah, still charge the six percent? They should be. Um, you know, we're not charging anything. It's up to well, the owner to do that right. and make that collection. And then uh, up to 90 days, after 90 days, they don't have to pay a tax. 90 day, above 90 days. Right. Pay. 91 days and on one, they don't have to pay occupancy tax. All right, on page 33, just pointing out what I already said, that we don't have to worry about a precedent. Uh, 
because we're still required to, we're obligated to collect occupancy tax even if they're renting it illegally. And the, the part of that conversation was, well, even if you're selling illegal drugs or selling legal drugs illegally <coughs> and you get caught, you're required to pay sales tax. If you're selling heroin, you're required to pay sales tax. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting conversation. <laughs> Uh, on page 35, uh, just for your, um, uh, as an example, I have known and have talked with Lake Lure several times in the past. I've rented houses at Lake Lure. Uh, they, they have some big houses there and often we'll get our entire family together and rent one of those houses that has six bedrooms or something. And, uh, and I have known that they have had a, a short-term rental and a vacation rental policy for a long time. And they go through a lot of measures, and we kind of copied that at Seven Devils as well. And we started implementing some some uh, requirements that were at least safety based. Um, I, uh, for instance, if you owned a house that was a short term rental in Seven Devils, if one entrance was uh, grade on grade and your other entrance and exit was like on a back deck and you had to go down 12 feet, well, you had to provide a ladder rope that was visible so they'd get off. You were required to have a fire extinguisher. You were required to have a snow shovel. You were required to have a home telephone. You couldn't just rely on a cell phone. You had to have a home phone so that when you could dial 911, they would know where you were. And I think that technology is probably improved now and and I think they can track cell phones pretty easily. Uh, uh, there were a number of things that you were required to do uh, in order to participate in a short-term rental program. The well, Lake Lure took that a lot, uh, a step further. You know, they, they dictate how many people can stay in the house. They dictate how many parking places you have to have. Uh, so there, this was just included so that you can get an idea of what another entity is doing. They require a permit, and their permit is $225 a year. Um, and for that $225, you, you get a sticker that goes on the front of the house that says you're a legal participant in the short-term rental program. Vacation rent, they don't call it short-term, vacation rental program. Uh, but they will do a fire inspection. They will do, you know, they'll send the, the uh, building inspector out, see if they see any issues. Uh, uh, they require standards for uh, sanitation. Uh, one, one of the big ones is how many people can you have in the house? And if that's especially important if they happen to be on a septic instead of on, on the town sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you get 20 people staying in a three bedroom house, it's not built to accommodate that waste. Did you notice that? Did you notice if your house had a sticker on it or not? Yes, it did. I mean, but we, we stayed in three houses there for a week, and all three houses did have the sticker on it. Is this something you could share with the planning board who's going to sure. research yeah, it? I'll, because I'll I think these you. are all great things that they need to look at and maybe skim through it before we see it. Yeah. I got a question for you. If, okay, if we have John comes in, he buys the permit to rent, say, or even issued a free permit, okay, uh, for short-term rental. And for some reason, his house burns down. And his insurance found, finds out it was rental property and not permanent residence. Do we have any obligation, any liability there? No, sir. Okay. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that insurance front company is probably going to pay that claim just like they would have if it had been a single family residence all <coughs> okay. uh, They're going to look real close about whether they're going to reinsure them. They're going to get themselves on a list that they don't want to be on. Right. Does it not negate the homeowner's policy? Um, it won't negate it, but it will potentially negate the renewal. Um, if if you know, you're supposed to be, if, if it's a homeowner's policy, you're supposed to be a regular occupant. Right. Uh, otherwise, you buy a dwelling fire policy instead of a, a homeowner's policy. Uh, so, I have never heard of an insurance company, and I won't say it hadn't happened, saying you're not covered because you haven't met the terms. But I have often heard, when I was in insurance, uh, them saying, you know, you, you, you don't have 
you don't shouldn't have a homeowner's policy. You should have a dwelling power policy mm -hmm. because you're not living in the house, and I have seen them cut people off. Just a thought I had. I didn't know. There might be somebody here with insurance experience. That, that, that any of y'all work in insurance? Well, um, I'm sure they. What I, I give you, for instance, uh, we and this doesn't have anything to do with rental or anything, but we had somebody who uh, whose house burned, uh, and uh, when they started doing some research, our company messed up because. They had had two previous fires mm -hmm. uh, at other locations. So, no, no, the owners so did. now they compile a list. Mm -hmm. And I think most insurance companies share that list. <laughs> 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 uh, on page 41 and 42, that's your read for your reading pleasure. That is uh, <coughs> the, the, the topic of short term rentals, vacation rentals is very mm -hmm. much a topic in the news right now in Nashville. I didn't have time to look and see what the outcome of their meeting was on January 9th, but they just met on this the same night we did. Uh, so I need to go in and look, but they are trying to really tighten up uh, short term rentals and actually, did they do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are they using is the lawsuit in Asheville ever been reconciled? I don't know. Is the town restricted? There was a rent down there. On the town. short term, I mean on rentals? I think it was based upon did the city of Asheville have authority to regulate that? What did they end up, I haven't seen the decision. The, the story I saw, and I didn't, I didn't get into it, but they, they passed it quickly to regulate stricter in Asheville. Now there was a lawsuit, was that the bed and breakfast issue? Where the lady got evicted? Was that the one? No, that's what it was. Okay. So um, the, the kind of things that we're going to be asking council is, uh, and planning board for recommendations that will ultimately go to council is, I, 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 I sense I know the one about do we want any other areas, SDR, um, what kind of rules do we want to implement, do we want to go to a permitting process and uh, have a fine if you're renting uh, in violation of the ordinance of uh, uh, vacation rental and short term rental uh, policy. Uh, so, there are a number of different things that the town could do to add some, some uh, meat to the enforcement action and that would help, frankly, would help us to know who's renting. Now, they're, the ones who are doing it illegal, they're not going to come to us and get a permit. Well, is there a way to, um, have we ever said, hey, um, let it, I don't know, for safety, I don't know how to encourage it, but to say we are revamping our short-term rental policy. If you currently rent, please come and register your house with the town. I don't know. I mean, before we go negative on it, like to be in a positive way, you know, we want our we want our places to be nice and safe and for the public welfare. Um, you get a sticker. I don't know. I mean, is there a way to be polite, you know, to encourage them to do the right thing? Well, let's talk about our rules that we have in place now before we go after everybody. Yeah, I, I don't think we're talking about going after it. I mean, uh, I, I think that there is an opportunity here. That we know it's a big concern among council. It's a big concern around among citizens. If we can find a way to narrow the uh, 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 amount of illegal rentals or unsafe rentals, I think that's in the best interest of the town, and I think that's a recommendation that planning would probably come back with. Is there a re so way to register though, and they get like a good? Not until sentence. council says we won't. You know, that's got to be something that the council comes up with and says, "You've shown us this and this, uh, and we want to go with this registration process, and from this day forward, whatever 
all short-term rentals need to have a registration process and then you it's a, a matter of trying to get people to comply and over what period of time it takes a while to get anything when you start something new. I like the idea that works. So. If we can sell, if we can give them some good positive things, what's in it for you to be a part of this group? What can you get from this information or registry? I like that and I think we can come up with three or four things of why it's in their best interest. Whether they're part of VRBO or any of those things, they do it themselves. Why should they register with us that they're renting out their place? And I think we can come up with some ideas. Well, I think that, uh, and that's why I asked you, I wasn't trying to trap you about was there a sticker on your place or not. But I think that if I'm coming into a town, I want to do it the right way as a visitor. And the, this, and that might be a, hey, these are Blue and Rock approved short-term rental places. And, you know, we could um, somehow help them, you know, help the visitors find, way find their way to these places. And it would help the, um, the people who handle those rentals, whether it's, um, you know, Blue Ridge or Carolina Cabins or Jenkins or a realtor or whoever it is. But, um, no, I, I mean, the planning department. Can incentivize? That's a good thing. How about a work session? Work session would be good. Invite. Here today. No. But invite those people that are doing short term rentals. Invite everybody. Put to me come. down as a short term rental oncologist. More like a cock Whoops. Whoops. Well, now, uh, I'll ask you. What do you want yeah. out the gavel? <laughs> I mean, do you think, I mean. He left it and blow it around. <laughs> Get out the gavel, Charlie. And maybe that would be the first step to the conversation. I don't know. All right. Um, um, <laughs> I will talk with Jim and I will talk with the planning board and we will come up with some ideas and um, we'll get more with um, the planning board and we'll get more with the permitting process and incentive, some way to incentivize permitting. Um, one way I, I can think of you could do it is you could have a list on the website of approved vacation rentals who have met certain specifications for safety and public health. Yeah. That's free advertising. Yep, free advertising, yep. and they get a sticker that for $255, they get a sticker. And you know, what you can say is that these are the recommendations. If you want to be on this approved list, is you have an inspection by fire, fire charges. You have an inspection by well, you could public that health. In that fee, in that well, fee. but see, that way we don't do it. We just say we're welcoming you. That's what uh, well, STR. Yeah, no the S yeah, you do. <laughs> the STR helper recommended that to register that you don't um, yeah, yeah. that you don't charge them. Come on in, register. This is what and what you do when you make your ordinance is say this is what the town would like you to see to be on this approved list. Okay. You need a fire inspection. You need public, I'm not, I don't know, public health, your septic tank. Well, you know, you that's know. pretty well, you much can sell what it either way. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have to pay, we don't have to pay for it. Right. And it, it's actually a money-making thing for the town, all, you know, but. Well, you gotta pay your boys. So. Yeah, and I would think there's a consult list for public, for p and that you could get um, consultants, retirees, just them. think about the things that could happen yeah. after the people are supposedly left. From the time that they left until they get cleaned up. Think of things that could happen. Leave the lights on. Leave the water going. Uh, they got a toy, stuff like that that we have knowledge of that we can help them with. We can advise you that. So there's a whole then we're more stuff. friendly or more yeah, positive absolutely. than being. Yeah. 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 We're not yeah. taking your money. People don't like to have the government involved in their home. They just don't. Well, Lake Lures, Lake Lures program. Yes, yeah, nice. Two pages, two and a half pages. Another thing that we required, uh, Lake Lure required too, uh, they ran, well, Seven Devils 
you were not allowed to leave your trash uh, at the road or anything. The cleaning company that came in and, and cleaned, they were required to take the trash with them. They could not put it in the street. Hmm. So there's another way to get around hmm. the trash. That's not, yeah. For information, where would be one house in this town that you might be talking about? I've my, got one up my on, neighborhood. I've got one on the hilltop way. I've got one the, the that house had more trash in, in what the picture was two or three days. That I sent him a picture, well, there, and we have a banner. Any we have a banner available. There, what do you mean available? Well, why is yours available? And mine is no, my my house personally is not. I know of two houses that are two or three houses down from our home that are short term rentals. So, Pat, this Illegal. is a picture. I'm not sure. This I'm is a picture that. of. Uh, they came on a Friday. Was this going to? Albert? Just past it. Yeah. This is the trash. Oh, this is this, this week. I used to call by one of my neighbors. Is that your house? No, it's down the street from me. So look where the, look where the garbage place is. So this was put out on Sunday. Okay? Garbage didn't pick up until Monday. And um, Recycle is... Uh, Thursday. Is that your neighbor? It's my neighbor. Thursday. Well, no, it's a good neighbor. And you should have hauled it off for him. <laughs> and it's in the road, by the way. And I called about one last week. On my street. Okay. Well, another way that we can help the town, um, encourage the town, is if they had neighborhood associations. Because then that gets the neighborhoods to meet each other. And, you know, if that guy, um, I mean, Nathan, if you paid Nathan $10, he would take that trash out for you in a minute and pull it back where it goes. If you know your neighbors, these problems don't happen. But that was a rental property, wasn't it? Huh? A rental property. Yeah. But if it, I mean, it happens in our neighborhood for, you know, they're, they're going back home yeah. on Sunday. They don't yeah. pull the, our trash day is Tuesday. Right. But I think there are people in town that would be willing, that to make a little extra money would be willing to maybe take that well, on. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think, I don't know, the Bowling Rock's any different, but most places that I'm familiar with, it, if you have a rental, they have a cleaning company that comes in and cleans the house up. Yeah, they haul the trash off. Take the trash with you. Because yeah. they've got the disposal down three points. They can one. call Vixter. Well, yeah. and that may be a That's separate a, thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can only get so many Mexicans. Well, I, I agree with Sue. I think that her and Ed talked about Ed's going to move. Give all this information, the planning, let them go through it. And then, uh, you know they had a. And I think so a lot of times they have these welcome kind of things. Yeah. And and, if, and if, every time you, if you sold a house, if the realtor every time they sold a house they had a sort of a sheet, and these these are some of the things that we've got that you need to know about. And one of them is about rental in our town, and that should be part of that. You mean part? I know in my neighborhood when it. I just say what I do because I don't like to be a bad neighbor. I just tell them I'm an officer of the town. And one of the things that I'm responsible for is, is making sure that we stick by our 28 day rule. So I don't want you to break that because if you do, I have no choice but to report it. So I want to tell you right up front that those are the rules. But I would think that if we sold a house in in the village, that they, there could be a, a village to say, here are some rules that you really need to be aware of. No parking on the streets at night, stuff like that. And that would really help the people. You can't leave your trash out. Beyond, you have to kind of come right back in. It, I, I would think the people would even want to know it. In another location, we the town actually made up that list and gave it to all of the uh, the short-term rental companies that we knew, and it had some emergency information and rules and regs. So mm -hmm. Good idea. We look at doing that. Oh, I just say that is good idea. There's a have we covered that? Okay. Great. Now, would you all like to take a break so we can get checked in? <laughs> oh, that's right. Might be at least better. Huh? Oh, you're staying here? 
That's a leading question. Yeah, he's and then come back and start the next session. He didn't know if he was his girlfriend. Come back. What time do you want us back? You he's walking. Um, you know you need to do that to the words us, right? Now. Excuse me? When would you like us to come back? Oh, uh, let's see here. It's 15, 20 yeah. minutes. What do you think? Yeah. Give people time to check so in. So the break goes from know, three to check in. Do you want to go out and get our stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Get in. Would, you, would you get my stuff? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Or Hillary. I never. <laughs> <laughs> we, in your, or we in your neighborhood. Tell them what not, but then I think each and every one of them is probably in their name. Be aware.